Okay, so I'm Carolyn Rupel, and I am the chief of the Gas Hydrates Project at the U.S. Geological Survey. And our primary focus in that project is to study methane hydrates, and I'll explain what those are in a second, in the context of energy resources, climate change, and seafloor stability processes. And because they sequester or, or store so much carbon in the Earth's global carbon cycle, people tend to be a bit concerned about the destabilization of, of that particular, uh, those particular deposits. So um, people have expressed concerns about sudden releases of undersea methane causing a lot of problems with the climate. Mm -hmm. what, what have you learned about that? Well, it's important to recognize that a lot of, so there are different sources of methane in, in the undersea. And so, for example, there's, there's almost always on what we call continental margins. So the areas where the sediment and uh, reaches off a continent, where there are almost always microbes generating methane in the shallow sediments. Whether methane hydrates exist there or not, there's, there's methane there. And there's, there are also methane hydrates in many places in the deep water. But there are a few things to remember about this to sort of take the edge off this idea that there's going to be a catastrophic release. The first is that most methane that is released to the ocean at water depths more than about 100 meters is not on a freight train directly to the atmosphere. So most of it actually dissolves in the ocean water and microorganisms can then convert that to carbon dioxide. And so yes, that does increase carbon dioxide in the ocean, which certainly is not a good thing. But on the other hand, the methane does not directly go into the atmosphere. And that's very important because we know methane is a potent greenhouse gas. So if we had this sort of direct freight train from a seafloor at say 400 meters or 1000 meters water depth to the atmosphere, then obviously that would be pretty uh, disconcerting. Another thing to remember is that most of these methane hydrates exist either in the pretty deep ocean where even with some subtle changes that are starting to be noticed in ocean temperatures, they're, they're not going to break down uh, very quickly. In fact, it's probably going to be many, many thousands or even longer, uh, thousands of years or even longer until they were to begin to break down. And furthermore, a lot of the hydrates aren't right near the, the, sea, the sea floor, if you will. And the sea floor is where, in places where you have temperature changes in the deep ocean, the sea floor is, is where you're going to feel those changes most quickly. So it's going to take time for that temperature change to propagate into the sediments. So overall, I would say the deep water environments are not a big concern in terms of injection of methane uh, into the atmosphere. So what we should be worried about are what we call the shelves. So these shallow areas that extend, for example, on the east coast of the United States, pretty far offshore, those are the places we should be really looking at. We should be looking at marshes. We should be looking at estuaries, other places where shallow methane is emitted and potentially does reach the atmosphere. Okay, so is, is there are some people who have been... Uh, making some statements about some of those shelves uh, in the Siberian uh, uh, ocean yes. shelf. Uh, what can you say about that? Okay, so the, the reference you're making is to work by primarily Natalia Shakova, Igor Simiatov, and some of their colleagues. And they've been working now probably for, for over a decade on the East Siberian Arctic Shelf and the Laptev Sea. And their papers document a large amount of methane being released on those shallow shelves to the atmosphere. So there are a few things that, that we can look at here. First of all, the question is what the methane source is. It's very possible that there is methane being released there. But for example, if some of that methane is really sourced in drainage of the continent by rivers, so it's, it's methane that's coming from rivers, that means it's not coming from right below the area, the shelf itself. So it's actually, it's important in the methane budget, but it's not methane that can be attributed to or blamed on what's a seafloor process. Another thing to note is that there's been some debate about whether the methane that they believe is being emitted in these areas is really coming from gas hydrates. So let me say something about these shelves, these shallow areas around the Arctic Ocean. 
these are very interesting areas because they're areas that actually do, in some cases, have leftover permafrost. So these are, per if you had hydrates there, they would be hydrates associated with permafrost. The reason those might be there is that obviously the ocean has, uh, the, uh, sorry, the um, sea levels increased about 100, 125 meters since the, the last 15,000 years, 20,000 years, depending on whom you speak to. The point is that as that, as sea level has increased, it flooded permafrost that was at the edge of, say, Siberia or Alaska or Canada, that permafrost is now subsea permafrost and it is degrading very rapidly. For example, on the Siberian margin, they estimate that the temperature now for the seafloor is on average 16 degrees warmer on an annual basis than it was when that same seafloor, which was used to be exposed to the air, was exposed as permafrost. So it's much warmer. And so the concern has been that with that very rapid warming that's occurred, you could start breaking down any methane hydrates that are within or beneath that permafrost. But there are a few mitigating factors that we should discuss. One is that in permafrost areas, if you have pure methane hydrate, the shallowest hydrate would be at about 200, 225 meters down. So if you imagine that you get warm enough to break that down, you still have to get that gas out of the system. And there isn't always a way to get it out. A lot of times gas becomes trapped in sediments. Another uh, mitigating factor is actually, unlike deep water gas hydrates that tend to occur in a lot of different kinds of settings and sediments, uh, in permafrost areas, generally you only get gas hydrates in pretty specific areas. So they're not ubiquitous, they're not occurring everywhere. So there was probably less methane hydrate in these subsea permafrost settings than people believe. Now, we have not finished this work yet, but our group uh, at the USGS has been working now for several years to collect ocean atmospheric methane flux measurements, not dissimilar to what's been done on the Siberian margin, all over the Beaufort Sea, where the Beaufort Sea is the U.S. and Canadian Arctic Ocean. And so far, all I, can, all I can really say is that we don't see very large methane fluxes. And the large methane fluxes that we see are only very close to land, which would imply that it's probably related to, for example, sediments that are that have a lot of organic material coming off the land ending up in the ocean and producing methane right there so at least in the Beaufort Sea and so in the western Arctic the US and, and Canadian parts we don't see high methane flux that doesn't mean it doesn't exist on the Siberian margin what it does mean is we have to be very careful about extrapolating from one part in one area to what's happening in the in the total Arctic and I think you're probably aware that the measurements, the, the top-down measurements, the atmospheric methane measurements, don't right now indicate that there's been any measurable increase in methane from Arctic processes. So whether those be onshore processes or offshore processes, there's not been a measurable increase. 